All right, so let's try this problem on probability. So jar contains 20 marbles, 10 are red, 6 are blue, and the rest are green. Okay. Quantity A, the probability of consecutively choosing two blue and a green marble without replacement. Note the word end. Okay. Quantity B, the probability of consecutively choosing two blue and a green marble with replacement. So let's take a moment to think about what replacement means. So in quantity A, where it says without replacement, that basically refers to that you have your jar, you pick a marble, and then you put that marble aside, and when you do the second picking, you have one less marble to choose from. Okay? When you say with replacement, that means that you pick a marble, right, and then you put that marble back in the jar before you put the next marble. So your number of marbles stays the same, or your total events stay the same. Okay? All right, let's try this. So for quantity A, you're choosing two blue, so choosing blue, blue, and then a green marble, okay? So this is the end probability. So here you have to multiply your individual probabilities times, uh, multiply each of your individual probabilities, okay? So let's calculate the first probability here, probability of, of picking a blue marble. So my denominator would be total events, which is the total number of marbles here, which is 20. And out of these, there are six that are blue. All right. Now, when I go to the second uh, picking, which again is a blue marble, now since there's no replacement, the number of marbles has gone down by 19. Okay. And since I have picked a blue marble already, the number of blue marbles available is five okay going for the last one which is the green picking my total number of marbles are now 18 okay and the number of that that are green is four okay all right let's simplify this uh, so four times five is 20 six times one six times three is 18 okay so i'm left with 1 over 3 times 19, which is 1 over 57. All right. Cool. Now for quantity B, I'm looking for the probability of picking two blues. So it's the same thing, but now I have replacement available, right? With replacement. So the first probability of picking a blue stays the same, 6 over 20. Now it's, since it's the replacement, all of these probabilities would have 20. Like my total number of marbles stays same because I pick the marble and put it back in there. So for picking the second blue, again, it will be 6 over 20. Picking the green, it will be 4 over 20. Okay. So this would then um, give me, let's see, 4 times 1, times 5. 6 times 6 will give you 36, 20 times 20 will be 400, 400 times 5 will be 2000. And I guess the simplest way is just to find the decimal values here to make the comparison. So 1 over 57 is point zero one seven, and 36 over 2000 is point zero one eight. Okay, so the B one is Here's another problem. Uh, so this one is one of the harder problems, and definitely one of the hardest problems you'll see on on GRE. And it would actually, if you are aiming to score 165 plus only, then I would recommend to even attempt these problems. So a good, I guess, strategy is is that you should be able to identify these hard questions, uh, so that depending on what your score range is, you can decide whether whether you want to attempt it or not. Cool. All right. So let's. So even though I've said that you know only attempted for one six five plus, I think it's a good um, exercise to go through this problem because a lot of the things involved here you'll see in in other simpler problems. This one combines many different things together, um, but elements of this would you would surely see in easier problems. So it's a good exercise to still do this. All right. So let's see. A pair of dice is. Cost twice. Okay, 
what is the probability that the first toss gives a total of 6 and the second toss gives a total of either 6 or 10. So, so, so dice uh, are a common feature uh, in probability questions and it would be good to understand how this works. So a, a die has 6 faces right, and each are numbered 1 to 6. Okay? So basically what you can have is that you can have uh, a 1 on first, when you, do, when you throw the die, dice, you can have 1 on the first die and then you can have one on the second die. Uh, similarly, you can have one on the first die, you can have a two on the second die. So the question here uh, is referring to the sum of whatever you get on each die. Okay? So it says that the first toss gives a total of six. So they're asking for the total that you get uh, when you uh, throw these dice. Uh, so if I, let's uh, read this probability statement again here. What is the probability that the first toss gives a total of 6 and the second toss gives a total of either 6 or 10? So the, both of those scenarios are probability that we have, we have talked about are here. So the n probability and the or probability. So the event that you want to find the probability is such that uh, the first toss gives you a total of 6. So my total here is 6. And means that I should sum this up. No, I should not sum. I should multiply this, right? When you have n, you do the product. And the second toss gives a total of either 6 or 10. So the second toss gives me a total of either 6 or 10. Now I know when I have the or, I can break this second probability further. which is basically the probability of getting a 6, a total of 6, or a total of 10. Okay? Or means that you have to sum up the probabilities. So here is in the equation term all the probabilities that I need to find. Right? Okay, so, so let's start with the probability of getting a total of 6. Right. So it would be good to kind of rehearse how exactly you'll get a total of six. So maybe I can get uh, two on the first die and four on the second die. That will give me a total of six, right? So I need to find all these combinations that will give me a six, right? Okay. So let's let's look at how the sum varies across my uh, what I get on the die, right? So if I have one and one on the on both the dies. I'll get 2. If I have 1 and 2, I get 3. And if I keep doing this till I have 6, so I'm keeping 1 on the first die and I'm changing the value on the, on the second die, I'll go up to 7. Okay? So this is how the, uh, the value of the sum is changing, going from 2 to 7. Now I can do the similar for getting uh, 2 on the first die and I can go and do this till I get uh, 6 on the second die, right? So this ranges from 3 to 6 and 2, 8, okay? So I can keep doing this on and on, and the last one that I'll have would be 6 and 1, okay? So 6 on the first die, keeping 1 on the second die, so that's the sum of 7, and similarly changing um, the second die values, I'll go up to 6, which will give me a sum of 12. So now calculating the probabilities, you need to know the denominator, which is the total event. So you can write out each of these and see what the total event is, or you can do this guess kind of a estimation here that okay, you have six options here, right? And basically six options this way. So this six times six gives you 36. Okay, so the total events possible is 36. Another way, I guess shorthand. Once you get good at this, is that you can say, okay, the first die, this is your counting uh, principle. Basically, your first die has six options, right? And your second die has six options. Basically, the part of this gives you the total events possible, the total options possible, which is 36. Okay. Cool. Now, looking at uh, the events that will give you a total of six, right? So, you can see you would have. Uh, 
1 and 5 here, which will give you 6. You'll have 2 and 4 here, which will get you 6. You'll have, um, so what you have here, let's see, 3 and 2, right? 3 and 2, oops, sorry, 3 and 3, which will give you 6. Then 4 and 2, 5 and 1, and none on this one, right? Because the sum is starting from 7 and 6. So, so in total, you'll have for your total, for, for your total of 6, you'll have this one, this one, this one, that's 3, 4, 5. So in total, you have 5 and 1, 7. Similarly, you can find the probability of getting a 10. Okay? Now, a 10 won't occur in this series, in this series, because you know your maximum sum is 8. With 3, the maximum sum you'll get would be 9, right? So, from 4 onwards, you're starting uh, the first row of a 4 is when you will start seeing a 10. 4 and 6 will give you a 10. 5 and 5 will give you a 10. And then uh, 6 and 4. So three options here for getting a total of 10. Okay. So here are your individual, prob individual probabilities that you are interested in. Right Now the only thing left is plugging these in your formula to find the probability of the event of the interest. Right? The probability of getting a total of 6 is 5 over 36. Probability of getting a 6 again is 5 over 36. Plus, probably getting a 10, just 3 over 36. So if you do the simplification here, you should get 5 over 162. Okay? Lots of fractions to take care of. So again, this is uh, definitely one of the hardest questions you'll see. Um, the trick is to, to understand this map of all the possible values that you get. And once you get good at it, a lot of things, these things can be visualized uh, rather than having this on the paper. Cool. I hope this makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this one. All right. See ya. Bye.